excitable ed, a story for children and adults. From the day he was born, Ed was excitable. He popped out, practically waving pom-poms. The day his baby sister was born, he tried to dance with her. When his preschool teacher told the class to slowly melt like ice cream cones, by the time the other kids had melted, he had melted, straightened, melted, straightened, and melted again. But when he started kindergarten, people weren't so happy with Ed's being so excited. When the teacher asked a question, Ed would blurt out the answer. Edward, you must wait until you're called on. When the teacher said it was time for recess, Ed raced to get a ball. But the teacher said, walk, don't run, Edward. Now you can't have a ball. At recess, there were pigeons sitting on the top of the roof. Ed kept jumping up to get a better look until one of them pooped on his head. All the kids laughed at Ed. Kids didn't like Ed. They would imitate him zooming around. And they didn't even care if he saw them. The teacher once called him Excitable Ed, and now that's the only thing kids call him. Hi, Excitable Ed. Zoom around for us, Excitable Ed. Still, Ed wanted to make friends, so when he saw other kids giving little presents to each other, he bought a piece of bubble gum for every kid in the class. But when he started to give them out, one kid said, That's stupid. Another kid tattled to the teacher, Ed has gum in class. And the teacher said, Give me that gum, Edward. Don't you know there's no gum in class? Ed bowed his head and gave her the gum. Then, one day at recess, when someone kicked the kickball into the street, Ed, trying to be nice, raced after it and didn't see the car coming. Splat! Now, it had to be in the hospital while they put his body in a whole body cast. The teacher called Ed's mother and said, I really think Edward should start taking a drug to calm him down. His mother politely said, I'll think about it. Ed asked his mom, Will I still be me if I take that drug? The teacher passed around a get well card for Ed's classmates to sign, but most of the kids snickered and didn't sign it, and not one kid came to see Ed in the hospital. Ed had to share the room with another boy. Dave, too, had been in a car accident, and Dave's face was covered with bandages, like a mummy. With Ed's whole body in a cast, they made quite a pair. For the first time anyone could remember, Ed was quiet. He was exhausted from the accident. Besides, it's hard to zoom around when your whole body is in a cast. Everyone in the hospital liked the calm, quiet Ed, except himself. He felt like he lost his real self. Now he was boring Ed. But one thing that didn't get put into a cast was his heart. Don't worry, Dave, said Ed. The bandages will come off soon. I'm scared of what I'll look like, Dave replied. The doctor's supposed to come in any minute to take off the bandages. Don't worry, soon you'll look good again. And just then the doctor walked in, and after a too quick hello, he removed the bandages. Monsters look better. Ed forced himself not to say, oh my God, and it was a good thing Dave couldn't see himself in the mirror. But then Dave could. Dave pulled out a small mirror from his bedside drawer. Oh my God, will I be like this forever? The doctor replied, no, but you will need some more surgeries. Will I look normal then? Quite possibly. Uh, um, Dave, you're healing very well. So good news. You can go home. Your parents will be here in a few minutes. And the doctor walked out. Ed said, what counts is what's on your inside. That's not what the kids think, Dave replied. Ed said, if you're nice on the inside, it shines outside too. Kids like nice as much as they like pretty. Dave thought about that. After Dave left, Ed lay there thinking, does it really matter more what's on the inside? Will people like me only when I'm not my real self? Should I take that drug for me, for the other kids? An excitable Ed closed his eyes. What do you think?